Hi, welcome back. Uh, this tutorial is to show you how to create a respawn function in the first person game mode. Okay, so this only applies to games where a player character is killed, they will respawn instantly. Uh, I'm going to be using a system quite similar to the Borderlands system. I'm going to show you what it's like. Okay, so this is the world as usual. So I have the button assigned to F to just destroy my actor and kill him whenever I want. So if I do that, I respawn back, reloaded the level because that is the checkpoint that was last made. Over here is my checkpoint. So as you can see, it's just a pole with the cylinder which you'll spawn on. Okay, now if I go all the way over here, press F, I spawn back here as this is the new checkpoint. Okay, to show you how you did this. Uh, we're actually using a couple of blueprints. So in the first person character, I'll show you that first. This is the function to respawn the player. So what you just do is, I've named this event spawn player. Uh, we'll call the spawn actor, and then we'll choose the first person character class. And then we want to, so once it's spawned, we want to possess it. Otherwise it will just spawn, but the player can't take hold of it. So we get the player controller, and we attach it to the possess. So now the player possesses the actor. And in the event graph, this is just the code that destroys the actor. I press F. Uh, the actor is destroyed and then the spawn player event is called using this variable spawn location. So on the checkpoint, this is our next blue. As you can see, I just have these two primitive shapes here like I did last time, which are rendered in the world and then around it I have this box collision. So in the code, once a component overlaps it, we cast the first person character. So if it is the first person character, what we want to do is we want to set our spawn location equal to the cylinder's location because that is our spawn pad and then we add the height of 128 to make sure we spawn correctly and the scale we set that ourselves just because when making the cylinder as you can see up here the scale is changed so if you use that it takes the scale there and it will scale your player character down okay so let's get into it so here we are in our first person template first things first i'm just going to create the checkpoint so I'm going to right click down in the blueprints folder, create a new blueprint class, I want our actor, I'm going to name this checkpoint and double click on it to open it up. The first thing is I'm just going to create how it looks, instead I'm just going to use the cylinder here and it had a scale of about 0.05, so that's where the player spawns. Now we want to add a new component and we want to add here in collision a box collision. As you can see right now it's very tiny. So we actually need to change that collision by quite a bit. I'm going to use the front orthographic view. And I'm just going to move it on up until it's just under that. Now we have this created. We, there's no point in doing any of the code yet because we don't have anything to assign its spawn location to. So now we go to our first person character. And what we're going to do is create a new variable here, and I'm going to name it spawn transform. And it's automatically set to a boolean as usual, so I'm going to use the drop down menu and get the transform. Compile it, and it's set to a default value of this. I'm going to change the z location to 128, just so that when they spawn, normally they don't drop through the map. That's just mainly because of how this world works. So now we need a new function. So we'll go over here and press new function. And we're going to do respawn player. Or you could just name it spawn player. Okay. So dragging off this, we want to spawn actor from class. And the class is going to be our first person character. Go back to this respawn player node and we actually need a new input and we want to name this transform and use this box slightly transform variable type. From there we want to connect the transform up to the spawn transform so that it's telling the spawn actor to spawn the first person character actor at this transformation. So including its rotation, its scale and its location. And then we want to drag off a possess node. Now it's actually not context sensitive, so you want to take that off. And the return value of this is the in pawn. 
Okay, because as you can read here, target is the controller, and it's actually the player controller that is the target. So right click and do get player controller, and we'll make that our target. So now it's saying spawn our first person character and let the player controller possess this character. And that's all there is to it. So now if we go back to our event graph, we can set up a node like I did. I'm going to use F again. And we'll drag off from we want to do destroy actor, target self, and we want to call our respawn player function. As you can see, it needs a transform. So we just drag in and click get on our spawn transform and pass that into there. So now we'll go back to our checkpoint into the event graph. So you want to make sure you've clicked the box collision and then typed on component begin overlap. Add that. So dragging off of here, we want to cast to our first person character. And our other actor is our object. So it's saying the other actor that actually interacts with this component, that is our object. And cast it to the first person character if it is one. If it is the first person character, they want to set our spawn transform. Now, what do we want to set it to? Well, we want to drag in our cylinder. And then we want to drag that off and write get world transform. And this is the important part. We want to now break the transform. So like I said, a transform has three different parts. The location, the rotation, and the scale. What to do with the scale, you need to make sure that stays constant for the player character. So you don't actually want the value of the cylinder scale. You do want its location, and you do want its rotation, though. So it's location, we want to do a vector, add a vector. Like I said before, you'll spawn like halfway in the floor. So you want to set that Z value to 128. Now off this, we'll do a make transform. Set its rotation to the rotation of the cylinder. And its scale as 111. And connect that to our spawn transform. Now everything's ready, we just need to place it into our world. So again, it's got quite a large area, so the player actually does collide with the collision. If I play this and spawn right now, then I will spawn at 0, 0, 0,0,128. However, if we go towards this checkpoint and press F again, you can see we are now activated on the checkpoint. So that's a very simple way to create a checkpoint system, respawn system as well. Okay, so one last thing I showed before was shooting through the checkpoint. Watch now. Because we haven't changed any of the settings, if I shoot at the checkpoint, the projectile is bounced off the collision. So we'll just left click on the collision here. And we want to go on this drop down menu and click custom. And just go to the bottom here where it says projectile. We want to ignore it or we can overlap it. So now, when I shoot at it, the projectile goes straight through. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If your opinions are otherwise, if you have any questions or advice for me, just leave it in the comments down below and that would be brilliant. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.